Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name Yahweh. In the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the name of the Rakakodash, the Rakakodash is the Holy Spirit that comforts and guides us, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutations to the elect. Stick to the script. And I say that lightly because ultimately, being in this truth, you know and understand that this is the Lord's movie. So whether you like it or not, you're going to skip to the um, stick to the script. But the thing is, what position, what role, what role are you playing? Are you playing the righteous role or the wicked role? Or I should say the, the righteous or the ungodly role. Because we already know who was playing the wicked, which is the so-called white man who forefathers Esau Edom. Who the earth was given into the hands of by the heavenly father, Yahweh, because of the Lord's chosen people, the Israelites' disobedience. And if you don't know, now you know the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And of course, we had the Israelite foreigners that may look like heathen, but are not heathen because their father, Sidon, traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel that's written in my bio because we were scattered all around the world due to us being disobedient. And that was part of one of our punishment, one of the curses we received in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 15 on down. Us going into various captivities, suffering the various curses that's written therein. We were the only nation that went through all of those curses. So if, if any other nation claims to have been through those things, they are a lie. Well, been through all of those things, they are a lie. But like I said, what? Stick to the script. What position you're trying to play? Because there's three classifications of men. The sons of God, which are Yasha Allah, which is Israel. In the Hebrew, Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, Allah meaning power. Then we got the sons of men, which are the rest of the, you know, the other heathen. For example, your, your Moabites, which are the Chinese, your Ammonites, which are the Japanese, Kushites, Ethiopians, Hamites, Africans, etc. And then you got the sons of the wicked, which are heathen as well. Like I said earlier, the so-called white man. But there is also the ungodly amongst our nation as well, which we call them, you know, the two thirds. But the ones that have that's doing this truth and truth and sincerity are ultimately going to want to stick to the script of being the godly. So this lesson is ultimately for the people that claim to be serving the Lord. You got to stick to the script. You can't be going and doing your own thing. But since I was talking about the fact that this is the Lord's movie, I'm going to start over with Ecclesiastes of Sirach, chapter 30, 33 and verse 13. It reads, as the clay is in the hand, is in the potter's hand to the fashion it at his, as his, at his pleasure, so man is in the hands of him that made him. To render them as like of him best. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look, so look upon all the works of the most high and there are two and two, one against another. And in this movie, for the most part, the ungodly isn't going to like the righteous because even amongst Israel, you got some of the people coming up against the men of the Lord. The ones that's teaching in truth and <clears throat> sincerity, starting from our elders and apostles, a great millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine, the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. You got some men in these other Israelite camps that's not teaching the truth. Teaching things that's contrary to what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Trying to come up their own way. Saying things like you can call the Heavenly Father and His Son, whatever you want. 
saying that you can have sex on the Sabbath. Celebrating the Passover as if it's a... Uh, a, a, a what they, I forgot to do the name Luke, Freaky Luke, Party, etc. Like, like, like it's a joke or something. As if the Lord didn't kill all the firstborns of the Egyptians during that time. Basically, because they don't have no fear of the Lord. We got some men amongst Israel that I believe in the spirit. They think that they are Yahweh Shai. Because of the way that they act. But we got to stick to the script. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It reads, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh Shem Yahshua and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. That's our whole duty. Of course, we in this world. And I, Apostle Paul stated in 1 Corinthians the 7th chapter that... We can use the world, but not abuse it. Our first priority is this truth. Like in Havashi, I stated, stated in Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. So we got to follow the straight gate, the path in a way that's pleasing in the sight of Yahabashi, Yahushua. You got to be seeking to know what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord if you don't know. Like the Lord said in Baruch, the fourth chapter, in the 28th verse, it was our mind that go astray, so therefore seek him, seek him ten times more. But like I was stated earlier, serving the Lord, for some people, is just too boring for them. Like they don't understand that we're in captivity. We're still in captivity to this day. And we're ultimately supposed to be in the house of mourning. Praying and begging that the Lord is going to have mercy upon us when all hell breaks loose. We're not supposed to be partying. Like I said, we're in the flesh. And of course, we we might chill and relax at some points. But not to the point that you're taking six months off, five months off. Of serving the Lord. You should be wanting to serve the Lord every day. To the best of your ability. Because the Lord doesn't have to have mercy upon us. But like I said, some people believe that serving the Lord is too boring. Especially as you can see how these women act. But like I stated earlier, Matthew 6 and 33, the scriptures say, the Habesha says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, then all of these things will be added unto you. So once we receive the kingdom of heaven, then you can chill, relax, and, you know, do the things that is pleasing to you and righteousness, of course. Because we're not going to be having wickedness in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to go to Matthew, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and i'm gonna start at verse 3 it reads but i fear well i'm gonna start at verse 2 it reads for i am jealous over you with a godly jealousy for i have espoused you to one husband that i may present you as a chaste virgin to yahweh shah hamashiach but i fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled eve through his subtility so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in hamashiach yahweh shah and we see like i said amongst these other Israelite cats is not preaching this truth and sincerity and truth and sincerity. The serpent ultimately is beguiling them. Just like the serpent snuck up on Eve and spit that game to her, telling her you will not surely die. Basically saying that you will be like a God, ultimately spitting game to her to cause her to eat that forbidden fruit, which was a metaphor of how things are being ran today, as you can see. These devils in power in this world is basically circling the drain. That's why the Lord has to destroy 
this kingdom and establish our kingdom of everlasting righteousness, but only the elect out of the nation of Israel, which is the one third whose salvation is for, is ultimately going to see it. Because two thirds of our people are not going to stick to the script, ultimately serving the Lord in truth and sincerity in a way that's pleasing in his sight. Because <laughs> some of these guys act as if they want to stay here in this kingdom, in this wicked and polluted kingdom. So ultimately, they don't give our people the 100% truth. Which, like I stated earlier, from our elders and apostles, the great millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine, we give the 100% truth for salvation. We're not hiding our candles under a, a bushel, bushel, however it's stated, roughly paraphrasing. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. It reads, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill and cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And as we can see, some men are hiding their light under a bushel. Like I said, speaking on IUIC, saying not, not proclaiming the true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. When the scriptures clearly say no name under heaven, thereby you shall be saved. In Acts 4, chapter and the 12th 12th verse, roughly paraphrasing. We're not supposed to be hiding this this truth. Like Yahweh Shai said, freely receive, freely give. Because ultimately we're going to preach this word, stick to the script like the Lord told us to do, feed his sheep. And ultimately who's going to receive it are the ones whose role in the movie is to receive it. The ones who is not going to receive it are the ones that's role is not to receive it. But if the Lord gave you this truth, it's time for you to go out there and fight this spiritual war. Because the Lord obviously chose you to be a soldier for him. Matter of fact, since I said that, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. I'm going to start at verse 3. It reads, Doubt. Well, I'm going to start at verse 2. It reads, and the things that thou hast heard of me among my many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So when we teach them this truth and someone else learns this truth from the next man, they supposed to take this truth, eat the whole roll and start teaching the house of Israel. Hit them highways and the byways, the ones that are able bodied to do so, so that the Lord put the, and that one is that the Lord put the spirit on to do, to do it, to do. But I'm gonna continue on to read thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So you're a soldier for Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Not for Esau Edom. Not for anybody else. The Lord has chosen you to be a soldier. So is you going to play that role, stick to the script, and do what's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Hashem Or are you going to try to play another role or go your own way and ultimately be kicked off the off set? Verse 4, no man at war from entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And that's one of the things you got to understand when you plan sticking to the script, ultimately working for the Lord, is that you can't have too much attachment in this world. Especially if your if your spirit can't handle it, because a lot of things in this world is going to cause majority of these people to not want to depart out of this world. They're going to, they want to continue to stay here. They're going to be like Lot's wife. When Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt, because ultimately she was going to miss the things that she was leaving behind, you got to be able to 
leave everything behind for you, how about Shem Yahweh And you got to have the faith to believe and understand that once you do those things for your how about Shem you will receive a hundredfold in the kingdom, like the scriptures say in Matthew, the 19th chapter, starting at the 27th verse. When the disciples asked you, how was I, what shall we receive for forsaking everything? And Yahweh gave them the straightforward answer. But you got to wholeheartedly to believe it. And you got to play your role as the righteous. But we got to be thankful because ultimately the Lord has given us this truth and earthen vessels. The Lord didn't have to give it to us. We could have been like majority of these people out here in the world. Not knowing what's going on, confused, lost, and going to be caught off God. Second Corinthians 4 and 7, it reads, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying, the dying of the Lord Yahweh Shah, that the life also of Yahweh Shah might be made manifest in our body. So even though we're gonna have to deal with the things in this world, other people playing the roles of coming up against us, we understand that that's because we're doing, we're playing the role of the godly for Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. And we got to continue to stick to the script to the end. Because Jehovah Shai stated in John 14 and 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it see of him not neither know of him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the ones that's playing the role of the godly are going to keep the commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Of course, we know that we can't keep all of the laws, statutes, and commandments 100%, being as though we're in captivity. But the thing is, we understand that we have a mediator to the new covenant, which is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah knows what we're going through. So we're supposed to try our best to offend less. You want to be that actor in the movie that's have the, the, the faith, just like the book, just like the, um, we read in the scriptures, the faith of, of, of Abraham. That's ultimately what we want. We want to have the faith of Abraham. The faith that Moses had when he basically chose to suffer with his people for a greater reward. Because he had faith in what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah was ultimately what the promise of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah was to give to our people. And only the elect is going to have that faith and stick to the script. And one of the things the Lord tell us to do, if you love me, is what he, like he told Peter. Who matter of fact was Moses' reincarnation. And as we know, that was King David. John 21 and verse 17 because this is his third time st stating it to Peter. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh Shah said unto him, feed my sheep. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. Feeding the sheep. And we're supposed to constantly feed the sheep until the Lord returns.
until he make Jerusalem a place in the earth. As we know, Jerusalem was a people before it was a place. So he destroyed this wicked and polluted kingdom by way of World War III, as the scriptures say. That lake of fire. Isaiah 62 and 6. Stick to the script. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which should never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's why GMS here, GMS, and the men that teach the same doctrine, we all pushing these videos day and night. We all done on them highways and the byways week in and week out. Because if you're going to stick to the script, you're going to play and you want to play the role of the godly, you're going to do what the Lord commanded you to do or ultimately be destroyed. Because like it says in Proverbs, the 16th chapter and the fourth, fourth verse, the Lord created all things for itself, even for the even the wicked for the day of judgment, roughly paraphrasing it. But I'm going to grab a last couple of few scriptures. Because ultimately the point was made, Lord willing. Hebrews shot the form, verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man fall out of the same example of unbelief. So we got to continue to labor to enter into our rest. So you got to stick to the script. Continue to labor. Do your role. And then eventually we'll enter into our rest. Because ultimately, we understand that in this movie... This kingdom is not it. So that's why the Lord told us to play our role. Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. So you're supposed to be departing mentally out of this world. You're supposed to be learning the ways of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, the good way. Because like it says, because it is polluted, because this world is polluted, it shall destroy you with even with destroyed destruction. Because as we can see, America, spiritually Egypt, Sodom, Babylon the Great, the Virgin Lord of Babylon, that great whore written in Revelation 17 chapter, America, and the whole beast system, system NATO and the EU is getting more and more polluted. And if you continue in it, you're going to be destroyed with a sword destruction like it states. And these devils, ultimately, that's what they want. They want to continue to make new, basically, what do you say, seek new inventions, find out ways to do this, ways to do that, things that ultimately is too high for them. They ultimately want to be Yahweh Shem Yahushai, but the Lord is not going to allow that to happen. And we understand that prophecies got to come to pass, and one of those prophecies that's they that they're going to try to push is the mark of the beast, the RFID microchip. And we understand that the people that don't stick to the script of being the godly and end up taking that, basically receiving uh, the mark, the RFID microchip. What the scriptures say, the scriptures clearly tell us in the script that they're going to be destroyed, the ones that do take it. And of course, as always, we don't give a damn about the heathen, so they could take it or not. They're going to be destroyed regardless. The only ones that's going to be preserved, according to the scriptures, are the ones that's going to go be first fruits in the slavery. The ones that's going to hide in their little bunkers that you can see that they're buying and building because the Lord put in their mind to do it. <laughs> because ultimately the, the, the Lord is the director of this movie. But Lord willing, that was edifying. Like I said, stick to the script. What role are you trying to play? Shalom.